a better car prophet. You have made it. You have made it. You have broken through in spirit. You've done well. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. We thank God for this wonderful morning and we are here to share God's word. I believe you are ready to receive another word of God that can bring advancement and improvement in whatever you do. A long time we met on the screen, but I know that yes, you're also resting and then focusing or reflecting on the old notes so that at least you know what God has really laid in your life, the foundation. 
The Bible says there is no any other foundation that ought to be laid apart from that which Christ has laid already. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank and bless you for this time. I pray as we share your word. May this word bring answers to people who are looking up to you for miracles and breakthroughs and break forth, Lord. May the expectation of their lives come through today. Your way says in Psalm 42, verse 1, As the deer panted after water bruise, so my soul panted after thee, O God. I pray, God, as they desire and they are wishing you for so much, so many things in their lives, Lord. Let it be a miracle. Let it be a breakthrough. Let it be a transformation mission and Lord break forth and break through for their lives I pray so that your people will have an advancement in whatever they do because you are faithful you will hear and answer prayer because without you as we pray if you don't answer that prayer no one could answer it because you are a merciful and a compassionate God hallelujah to Jesus you are the only one who can show mercy and compassion to your people around the world thank you very much hallelujah to Jesus please we are here this morning to share God's with you I'm talking about Jesus the bread of life Jesus is like somebody who uh, is a miner and have to mine go under the ground looking for gold or diamond or amber and then they have to dig and dig with the heavy 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 machines and they get it it's not, even they get it in the midst of uh, clay and other items they process it before they sieve after sieving they get the gold and then they get it all and they uh, put them in fire and it's a good to process that they know that yes this is good so Jesus is, is like gold and it's like uh, diamond or amber I know it's more than that but with your search because like other countries in Africa, Jesus is not scarcity like bread. It's available. But other countries, uh, natural bread is scarcity. So it's like uh, when you go to like Egypt or other Arabian countries, Jesus is scarce. Only few are hungry and looking for him. But when you go to other countries in Africa, like Ghana, Jesus is too available. The search for him is not too much. So if the physical bread in Ghana is overflow, people will not struggle to look for bread because it is there. But other countries where there is no wheat or anything that they could use to produce the bread, people will struggle and they can stagger and go through so much. So it is important that as we have gotten to know Jesus and we have heard about him or we are born again, we should hold on to him. Uh, like Hebrews 12 verse 1 said that looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and when you read Hebrews 13 4, 4, 5 and 6 and 7 it's talking about how we can link our life with him how we can continue to depend on him because if you depend on him he will never leave us nor forsake us because we shall boldly declare that the Lord is our helper what can man do unto us Hebrews 13 verse 4 going hallelujah to Jesus so let depend on him and let trust him and let increase our passion desire for Jesus so they can keep eating the bread because he is a bread of life and anytime we, uh, we wake up in the morning at any time it's like we use bread a lot you see in the morning people use bread and tea a lot children use bread a lot you see so we need this bread of life to be in us upon us around us with us all the days of our life because lack of the bread it could bring hunger it could bring uh, scarcity and people may go through because the content of the bread is too much the protein and the things that are in the bread is very good for the nourishment of our bodies. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, with our work with God, other spiritual or physical, we, whether we need Jesus, we don't need Jesus, praise, we need Him, that He needs us. So let go for Jesus and let keep him as you are born again. Keep him, trust him, depend upon him, and do his will because he's the only bread of life. That life, it's bread. It's Jesus. So let's focus on him and let go to God's word. I believe it will really help you. And then the second example I want to give you to is about when somebody is in the lagoon and the, the flood waters is taking him away. away. And then the rescuers, firefighters or whoever, they will try all means and whatever to rescue the dog or something, whatever. And I believe that dog will challenge uh, the firefighters and whatever, whoever or rescuers or whoever, or the, if the person is safe from the danger zone of the lagoon, the, the, the flat waters, I believe the person really challenged the government or people who stood in and saved him. A cloud may be around, but none will endanger his life to enter into that uh, flat waters. But some few people who are very skillful and they understand the move of the current of the flat waters. They could enter into it and they could save uh, that person because they endangered their lives and saved the earth. This is what Jesus did. He endangered his life. He put his life down 
and he came and died for us and that's what he said in john 10 verse 10b that he came and that we may have life have it what more what abundantly so let's go for god's word and i believe it will be applicable that you know god and god is in you and god is with you increase the desire of god in your life and everything will be well you will not be afraid of anything all is faith all is peace all is prosperity all is joy in the holy ghost let these things overflow in your own life so now we are going to read john chapter 6 verse 25 to 29 amplify and it's talking about this okay okay so i read on when they found him on the other side of the sea they asked him rabbi when did you get here what to the people jesus answered i assure you and most solemnly say to you you have been searching for me remember the word search you have been searching for me not because you saw the signs attesting miracles but because you ate the loaves and were filled do not work for food that perishes but for food that endures and leads to eternal life which the son of man will give you for god the father has authorized him and put his seal on him then they asked him what are we to do so that we may habitually be doing the works of god jesus answered this is the work of god that you believe are there to trust in rely on and have faith in the one whom he has sent thou says god's word to you and i amen may his name be praised remember this and i want to quote the phrase where he said that jesus answered i assure you and most solemnly say to you you have been searching for me a lot of people are searching for jesus for good reasons many too are searching for him for bad reasons for their own interests or benefit people go to church because they know that the church authority will sponsor them pay their school fees that's why they are there they are not there because of Christ. They are there because of uh, um, charitable organizations that they will benefit something physically. That's what they are there. And that's a bad attitude. The main focus should be on Jesus. So what about that church that you have been attending? Don't have that money or help to be given to you. Will you still follow Jesus? Because following Jesus, there is no turning back. So we need, you need to really work on yourself to know that you are not going to church because of so so and so but because of jesus who is the blood of life so people were looking for him because he performed miracles and the ethnos of bless some time ago so they were coming again in john 6 and then he perceived in the spirit that they were not coming because they love him they were coming because he performed miracles the last time so they were coming again so they could keep their monies and then for him to perform miracles to keep them physical bread but they were not looking for spiritual bread that supersedes everything so praise you need to clarify some things here as you are serving the last you are a christian are you in that chair because of what you can get from the church or from the prophets or the man of god or from the people who are in the church or from jesus god bless you all right so i give you this few points and i believe it will help you the sub topic desire to look for jesus as you are searching for him or you have found him don't keep him because of the benefit you can get for him physically but rather he is your source he is your shepherd in psalm 23 verse 1 the lord is my shepherd let him be the shepherd of your soul spirit and body your life let him lead and run your life guiding you be the roadmap of your life let him lead you and guide you come what may in smooth life in smooth life or uh, bad life or any situation or bad weather you are not moved by what you see, what you feel, and what you hear because you are focused on Jesus, not what men can give to you. Some may say, well, when he was sick, the members didn't attend to him or her, nobody called him or her. That's it. But remember that if you are paying tax to the government or whatever, you are paying rent to the government, maybe apartment, whatever, and you pay tax and pay some things in the government, when you are sick, why, why doesn't government official come to you to, to, stick, to see you when you are sick? But when you are attending a church, and for example, you pay church or not, and you are sick, and nobody call you, you bring the pastor, church or talk that uh, you are living in the church because nobody minds you, but what about your taxes that you pay, and things you do to the government, why don't you bring the government official that they don't come? You see, people wanted to have a, a reason to accuse a church. People, people hate church a lot. A lot of people hate pastors, their progress. People are hungry for money. And if they have money, if they have, they have too much money in their life, they will never accuse a pastor or any church. 
Because why? Because the reason they are accusing the pastor of the church because the church has everything. And they wanted to make an excuse to leave the church because that. Why don't you pay to the government and whatever? Oh, my God, my God, my God. Desire to look for Jesus. Number one, look for him. Look for him. Uh, you were a Christian. You say, I know Jesus, but it's not enough. Looking for him is searching the scriptures and reading his stories in the Bible every day and living with it. And then later, the eye of your understanding, the Ephesians 172, will come to you because as you seek him, he also begins to reveal himself to you in revelation or by revelation. One as I sit here, I know Jesus by the letter or by the word. Even Bible says the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. And the Bible says John says, Sister today, the word that I speak to you, they are, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? So we need the word and the spirit. The word is Jesus, and the spirit too is Jesus. That's the Holy Ghost. So, so we need to know God by the word, and we need to know God by revelation. That is two things that will help you stay under his umbrella. So look for him through the scriptures every day. And then he will also come to you by revelation. And then you become a witness about Jesus wherever you may be. Number two, keep him in your heart. He comes, he goes. No, and you punish him, you let him live your life because you use sin to suck him. Jesus is harmful, but sometimes it becomes harmless that he will not hurt you, you know, do anything because he has given you the free will. But as he came and lived in you, you also use sin to take him out. Holy Ghost is gone, and that's it. But later you apologize, you repent, and, and he comes back. And then you sin, he goes, he comes, he goes. He comes. No, 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 we don't serve God like that. You need to make a quality decision by being under him. Don't suck him from your heart because of sin. Let him remain there because that is the only bread of life you have for, your, for the nourishment of your spirit, soul, and body forever and ever. Keep him in your heart. That word have I hid in my heart, that my nonsense against it. Keep him in your heart. Number three, Jesus is your healer, redeemer, and savior. Yeah, save your soul. Maybe you are not saved for about 10, 20 years, but he protects you and guides you. But physically, the day you be sick, celebrate, he's the only one too that may come to heal you. Sometimes medicine will do a letter, but Jesus himself will be around you, and quickly, whatever they planted against you, everything goes back, because why? He is in you because, you see, when the Holy Spirit is in you, demons and wickeds and wizards and those who are uh, evil and uh, necromancers, they can't bind you with their disease and sickness because God is in you. Whatever they throw on you, Jesus also will take it out of you. When they give you sickness, Jesus will take it out of you and give you healing. When they attack you, he will come to, uh, I mean, disconnect you from that attack. Because why? Because the Holy Ghost is already in you. God is in you. They come by. So the benefit of Jesus is that when the enemy comes like flood, the Spirit of the Lord, God, shall raise up a standard against the Number three, Jesus is your healer, redeemer, and savior. Today, you may not know the benefit, but tomorrow you may know. Number four, when you walk with him, you will never be disappointed. Today, maybe you have seen a series of disappointment, but very soon all will be over because when Jesus opened the door, no one can close. You see, life becomes different because life is a journey. Gradually, you will be leaving the old realm and you'll be entering into a new realm. And Jesus will begin to do something new in your life. Perpetual peace, prosperity, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you walk with him, you will never be disappointed. Number five, keep your trust in him. Trust is everything. Trust is faith is trust. Faith means assurance, trust, and confidence you have in him and also in his word. Come what may, your faith, you see, you hold on to God first and you hold on to your faith and you don't yield to your body and to the circumstances of which you are undergoing the problem or a tragedy. You're not moved by what you say. Keep your trust in him. Trust is everything. Never betray your trust and give it to anybody. Give it to Jesus and he will see you through. And Norma says, keep your love in him. Love. Never let anything dwindle or reduce your love for God because of this and that and that. Focus. That's why you need to keep searching the scriptures. And as you seek and seek him through the scriptures, you will find eternal life. You will find peace. You will find Jesus himself through the scriptures coming back to you. And also by revelation, he will be coming to you. So keep your love in him. Love is another thing. And when you read First Corinthians 13, 13, it says that there are three things about 
abide love faith and hope what but the greatest of these words is love so your love for him should be an ultimate because he also has shown his love for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god is not sending his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him the world might, might be saved in john 3 16, 17. so keep your love in him that is the only thing that Jesus will be kept or will be around you. The balm of Gilead will be in you and around you, protecting and guiding you and your family. And the enemy can never get you. Last one, number seven, never let him live by your sin or obedience. Do not let Jesus leave you because you have sinned. Today you have sinned. Tomorrow you have sinned. The next day you have sinned. Always sin, 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 sin. And Romans 6, 15 said that sin shall no more have dominion over you. And this one I'm talking about Jesus, the bread of life. So keep eating Jesus from the scriptures. Keep worshiping him so that as you worship him, if something goes up and something also comes down, something good from you will go up to him to eat and then he also will feed you. He told the woman, uh, Samaritan woman, he said, give me to drink. He said, no, we don't deal with the Jews. You take it and fetch yourself. Yeah. And he said, I can give you water when you drink. You will never test it. He said, wow. Then, the, wow, give it to me. Water? I've never heard it before. Can you give me a, a water to drink? as a human as I am. So when I drink, I will not be tested again. That's by revelation, by revelation. That water is spiritual water. John 7, 37 to 38, is out of your belly shall flow. The river is what? Of living water. So there's something going on in you that you don't lack, you're always fulfilled, you're always, go, you are always at peace, you are not carnal. Christ in you is the hope of glory. May God be with you. I know that this message has really come to bless you. I wanted to hear from you this morning, from YouTube or, or to our YouTube or Facebook. I wanted your contribution and I know that you are praying for me as well so I can come to you on the screen with best, best, best and good subject from heaven to you to enjoy. May God be with you and have a great day. We love you all. Amen.